Okay, welcome everybody. I appreciate you spending some time with us on the webinar today. My name is Clay Malcolm here at Advanta IRA, and I'm delighted to be joined by Dr. Vance Cast today, uh, and he's going to be talking to us about uh, futures investing uh, and bringing his expertise to all of us. I, I, I was just explaining that it's not something that I have a ton of expertise in, so I'm going to be learning alongside of you and uh, and looking forward to the event. The uh, we're going to start a little bit with uh, some IRA information and about how self-directed IRAs work in this particular scenario. It's not something that we typically do, uh, but as you'll see, self-directed IRA uh, custodianship does have some advantages when it comes to certain types of investment strategies. And then I'll turn it over to Dr. Cast, and, and he will be the, the bulk of the presentation talking about futures investing and, uh, you know, teaching us about how that, what that landscape looks like, things to look for, et cetera, et cetera. So thanks a lot for joining us. We are gonna answer questions at the end. So as questions come up for you, please feel free to go ahead and type them into the questions box in your console and we'll answer those as we uh, finish the, the uh, kind of slide presentation. Happy to do that, so uh, type them in and we may very well answer the questions as we go through the presentation, but if not, they'll be right there and we can answer them at the end. And thanks for joining us. And I'm going to go ahead and get started here. All right. So you don't need a picture of me, obviously, because I have my video on. But uh, again, my name is Clay Malcolm, uh, and I've been a self-directed IRA professional for about 10 years. And almost all of that time, I've also been a self-directed IRA investor. Um, I'm I'm one of you. I'm one of us. We're, uh, we're all people who are trying to maximize the efficiency of our tax advantaged accounts and invest in things that will allow us to uh, retire the way that we want to and at the time that we want to. So um, not only have I had extensive experience in the industry as a professional, but also as an investor. You can see my contact information there. Uh, I am happy to be a resource for you both today as well as into the future. So at any point, if you have questions about self-directed IRA investing, I'm absolutely happy to uh, assist you, whether that's general information, specific questions, it doesn't matter what part of the process you're in, please feel free to reach out. I would like for you to uh, have a good self-directed IRA experience, investing experience, and I'm happy to help with whatever information I can provide. All the information that we're gonna be presenting today is gonna be for education purposes only. Uh, at Advanced IRA, we do not give tax, legal, or investment advice. We don't advocate any particular investment strategy or investment vendor, and we certainly consider uh, consider it uh, our obligation to recommend that you talk to your investment team whenever you're considering any type of investment. That could be your CPA, attorney, CFP, it could be your uh, parents, it could be your kids, <laughs> whoever your financial team is, we certainly encourage you to, as part of your uh, due diligence process, to talk to them about any investment that you're considering. And in terms of us at, Van at Advanced IRA, we are a self-directed IRA provider. And again, I'm gonna explain how that fits in with futures investing, because that's not always terribly intuitive. We are uh, a company that's been around for about 20 years. We have well over a billion dollars that we're doing the administration for. And what that means is that we're big enough to have seen everything, but not so big that you can't get one of us on the phone. Um, we're absolutely invested in the customer's experience in terms of their IRA investing. You do get assigned a, a specific account manager with every account um, so that you have a go-to person, not only from uh, on my level, which is more conceptual and getting set up and getting ready to go and learning about the rules and things like that, but also a person in the, uh, in the main office who's looking after the mechanics of your account. So you have a team. Uh, both myself and the account manager, we're helping you to execute the investment strategy that you want to do. And Advanta is a, is a company that's built around, again, customer service. And one of the things that's important for us is that we be educated as well about uh, certainly IRA rules, but also the ways that IRAs can be invested in particular asset types. Um, we offer all kinds of education, again, making sure that you have the information that you need. So we do events like this. We have a video library, as I mentioned, um, often uh, most of it's on our YouTube channel. Um, blogs are really our kind of news channel. So if there's something comes up like the Secure Act or the CARES Act or things like that, that's changing legislation around IRA investing, you can always go to the blog and find out what the newest uh, details are. We also uh, consider it to be our role to participate as much as is possible 
uh, and investors being successful throughout the life of their IRA investing uh, lifetime. And one of the things that we do, even though we do not uh, give tax, legal, or investment advice, or uh, put any individual investors with any individual uh, investments, we do offer a networking event that's online. We're doing it twice a month at this point. It's called Fish, Promote, and Prosper. You can see the link there, and you can get to it on our website. And it does allow for investors to talk about what investments they're looking for and investment providers to come on and say, hey, these are the investments that I have that are live right now. This is something you might think about as part of your IRA portfolio. So it does allow for some interaction in terms of specific investments and finding out what your next investment is going to be for your IRA. Again, we're not advocating any of the, the pitches that you hear on the broadcast, um, and we don't do that as part of our service, but it is a an event that you can come and, and participate in so that you have a, a way to see what kind of investments are out there. And when I say self-directed IRA provider, I just want to be clear because a lot of you are not entirely sure exactly how self-directed IRA investing works. It is really the combination of two things. One is the account types, and these are they. These are the account types that can be self-directed, and they are the account types that you're used to. Uh, traditional Roth, SEP, simple, solo 401k. Some people are not aware that your HSA, your health savings account, can also be a, a self-directed IRA investor. It's not actually an IRA, it's a self-directed HSA, as a matter of fact. So all of those account types can be invested in alternative assets. They are not uh, tied to publicly traded securities, even though today we're going to be talking about that realm in a different way. Um, and I'll, again, explain to you how we fit into that equation. But all of these accounts types that you see today could be involved in futures trading the way that Dr. Cast is going to talk about them today. So do understand that the account types and their tax advantages can be married with the assets that you're going to, the asset class that you're going to learn some about today. And in terms of the list of combinations of things that your IRA can invest in, it's actually incredibly voluminous because there are only two real prohibitions. So your IRA or HSA or solo 401k can't invest in insurance or collectibles. Those are the only two asset classes that are prohibited by the IRS. And that leaves an awful lot of things left over, right? So all of those account types can be invested in real estate, partnerships, private equity, uh, private notes, futures, uh, commodities, um, precious metals. So all of these asset types are allowable for your IRA. The reason that you might not know this is because if your IRA is at a bank or brokerage house, they actually don't allow for these quote unquote alternative assets. And that's just the way that they built their business model. No harm, no foul. But if you ask them, hey, can my IRA uh, you know, buy a piece of real estate with a bank or brokerage house, they're going to say no. And that's because the business model that they built, they don't handle real estate. So all you're really doing when you come to a self-directed IRA provider like us is coming to a, a, an IRA custodian that can provide an account that is allowed and encouraged to invest in quote unquote alternative assets and hard assets. So real estate, uh, private notes. And again, today we're going to be talking about futures. And even though this is not something that is, um, and I, so I'm going to talk specifically about one of the capabilities of self-directed IRAs that's not really terribly well known is that it is often a, a procedure or process or a, a, a combination of a membership or a learning tool or actually buying investment tools uh, that contribute to the way your IRA invests. Um, so you're, if you want to invest in futures, you may need a, a specific laptop to do that, or you may need a membership in a in an organization, or you may need some uh, some other type of professional service, or you know any of the uh, you may need an account type at a I don't know I'm not sure why eight I is down there that doesn't have anything to do with anything it was a typo, um, but you may need features that your IRA purchases and participates in it and arranges in order to be able to invest in the thing that you want to. So for instance, when you're setting up your futures account, if you're setting up your account to do futures investing, you may need some of those things. And at a bank or at an IRA, at a bank or brokerage house, they're not set up to allow those types of um, acquisitions and to be able to put those pieces together. So part of the reason that we're doing this webinar today is to make you aware of the fact that you can put those pieces together in your IRA 
and then the gains or hopefully the gains that you make in terms of futures investing or any other type of investing that requires these types of tools would also uh, be able to be uh, allowed in your tax advantaged account. So again, putting together the account type with the investment and hopefully that's the, the investment strategy that works for you best. Same, same general procedure, you open your account with us, it takes about 15 minutes, then you fund that account. Typically people are doing that via transfer or rollover um, from another IRA that you have or from a 401k at a company for which, at which you no longer work that makes it automatically mobile, meaning it can be rolled over without tax or penalty. Same with transfers from other IRAs, no tax, no penalty, you're really just moving it over from one uh, trustee or custodian to another. And then at that point, once the cash is in your IRA at Advanta, then you are able to start setting up your investment strategy, whether that's buying an, a, an, out, an asset outright or setting up some tools in order to, let's say, trade futures. So all of those things are available to you. The process is relatively simple and you can set it up, generally speaking, without tax or without penalty. It's just a matter of having your IRA at Advanta or a company like ours that actually handles the assets that you want to be in. Okay. So setting that up as your IRA can do this, and this is something that, that could be possibility for your portfolio if it's something that you feel comfortable with. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start turning the process over to Dr. Cast, and let me just get my change of presenter going here. Dr. Cast, are you there and ready to go? Yes, sir, can you hear me okay? I can, absolutely. Uh, thanks again for joining me today, I really appreciate it. As I mentioned before, I'm gonna be learning along with the rest of the attendees. So I'm gonna, uh, it looks like you have your screen all, all together there. So I'm gonna let you go ahead and take it away. All right, fantastic. Which screen am I showing here? Am it I looks like a title one? screen that says self-directed IRA brokerage account for successful short-term investing. Okay, excellent. That sounds really good. Thank you so much. What a wonderful presentation that you gave there. Um, it's, um, and I lost my console here. Let me see if I can get that little console back. Actually, it's it's all right. Um, welcome everybody this morning. Uh, that was a great presentation uh, on self-directed IRAs and how they're how they're useful. Um, I myself have self-directed IRAs. <clears throat> um, I think they are a tool that is highly underused um, in the, in the marketplace here. So I want to talk a little bit about successful short-term in investing. Um, my name is Dr. Vance Cast or Vance. You just call me Vance. Um, I'm the founder of a uh, trading group. We're one of the largest trading groups, uh, educational trading groups uh, here in the States. We actually advertise on uh, 30 plus radio stations, iHeart Radio, Cumulus Radio uh, uh, across the country. We have an hour long radio show on the weekends. And for the de past decade, that is how we've attracted a lot of people to our educational platform. Uh, there's a lot of really cool things here about me, I guess. Uh, I didn't uh, write all these things, but I, I have a phrase called think in crayon. And basically what that means, if you can't explain it to a five-year-old, you probably can't uh, understand it yourself uh, or you don't under have that depth of knowledge. And we believe that education is a really good thing to have. Uh, one of the things that isn't mentioned on this screen here is um, all the fun stuff, you know, like my Tourette's, which makes me a really fun guy every now and then. Um, so uh, I'm just a regular guy, just a regular guy that uh, has been in education in various uh, forms for a long, long time, been in investing uh, in an area called risk management, risk homeostasis theory, risk management. And so we believe that to manage uh, any of your investments or your life as a whole, you need to learn risk management. So we have tools as a group to learn those kinds of things. I'm going to be perhaps talking about some numbers as examples. Uh, full federal disclaimer here. Um, you know, we're not allowed to 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 entice um, anybody through performance promises. Uh, you know, you've heard things like uh, past performance is not indicative of future gains, things like that. Um, so um, we are not brokers, we're not advisors uh, in investing, we're not tax advisors, we're not attorneys, none of that. Though we have those people in our group, it is a self-directed membership group that has a big educational component in it. And what I'm going to be demonstrating to you today is that educational component. Some of my slides basically have already been covered by this previous presentation, so I might skip over a couple of slides as I move along. But one of the things that you have to realize in, in, in financing and investing is that 
there's always yeah. more to learn and we Dr. really Ken, don't want to can i interrupt we, you for a second i have a couple of yeah. comments i see on the on the console here that that they may not be able uh, not all the users are seeing your slides can you check the uh the thing on your console that says audience view and make sure that they can actually see the slides there i mean i can see them but the, it may be that others cannot on the console audience view hold on one second yep <clears throat> What am I looking for there? It says audience view 92% or 97%. Um, nope, it's not that. It's uh, It should be a little screen that shows what you're showing. So have you, have uh, you well, pushed? Yeah, under audience view, let me look. Yeah, yeah it is changing on my screen as I change. Okay. So I'm, I'm on the first slide now. Okay, and great. It, is it, looks like, it looks like we've got everybody back. Sorry about that. Sorry to interrupt. Hey, no uh, problem. Turn it no back problem. over to you. All right. So we want to, you know, keep things simple um, and understand what we're doing. The problem is a lot of people don't understand, you know, all the options out there and, 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 and what they're doing. So we're real big on education. The audience here is we have uh, advanced clients uh, and prospective clients looking for ways to advance their portfolios with self-directed uh, investment instruments, right? Um, uh, they, I don't really want to talk about, you know, higher returns, lower returns or anything like that, but uh, typically you're trying to maximize uh, what you're doing, obviously. Uh, I also have people in this presentation that are from our group um, that are actually active futures traders right now. Who Hey, Dr. Cast, I, I have lost your sound and it looks like some other folks have lost your sound as well. Sorry about that. So I checked, I checked the muting. You look like you're good here. So you wanna hit that again and give it a go? Nope, not yet. I, I'm not, not hearing your audio. Okay, so one of the things that, that I might suggest, Dr. Cast, is that if you see in, again, on your console in the pull down that says audio, there is a place where you could actually call in via phone. Yeah, can you hear me okay? Oh, there the you go, there you okay. go. Let me know if you use the audio. Uh, folks, um, I was telling him earlier, we were hit by a hurricane last week, so, um, uh, there might have been a media comm thing or something like that, but uh, we could possibly call in by phone. Uh, just let me know if something goes uh, awry here. Thanks Will do. so much. Uh, so, you know, it's not just all the money that you make, it's what you can keep. And so definitely self-directed IRAs are very handy in allowing you uh, opportunities to invest in things that most people don't invest in when you're talking about IRAs, 401ks, things like that. Okay. Um, one of the key concepts uh, with self-directed IRAs and um, uh, in coordination with futures trading and 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 uh, trading rather than typical investing um, is taking control of your future and you know taking control rather than a broker or uh, you know putting you into things or rather than having a mutual fund direct um, uh, your investment through a mutual fund. Uh, various things like that you can you can trade and actively trade in things like futures um, and take control of what you're doing but you have to do it in a very safe way we would never recommend that you take all of your money out of your 401k that the, the way that current currently sits or your ira and stick it into a self-directed um a retirement instrument and just start trading away we'd never recommend anything like that but a portion of your portfolio can be actively traded and we believe that you you build that portfolio organically. In other words, you don't feed it money from your current investments. You you get educated, you get the tools that you need, and you get a good 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 um, backing of a good group that you belong to to learn how to trade and be mentored through that process. 
uh, and, and that money should grow organically. So we'd never recommend that you take a lot of your money because the two temptations are too great and too many people have ruined themselves by doing that. So we have very specific ways that we spread our risk uh, uh, as a group. Uh, there are a lot of lessons that we learned this week, uh, this year from COVID-19, right? Uh, there are a lot of investment that had a really rapid decline. Uh, for example, the S&P 500, the Dow Jones went really down uh, during you know, the February, March, April in that region. Um, and then it's recovered, it's since recovered. Um, however, um, us active futures traders, we were making money while the market was going down. So I'd be at the bank and I'd hear people talking, wow, I lost so much money in my 401k this week. And I just kind of smile because my people were making money and, and losing money as investors, we lose money too. Um, but they were uh, typically had the opportunity to make money while the market was going down. So they're actively trading. And my advice uh, all the time or our collective advice as we're talking was leave your money where it's at, actively trade. Then when the market recovers, you'll be you'll be good to go so a lot of things that worry us uh in times of like this decline in the market during COVID 19 um uh, really don't affect us that much um we just learn to manage our risk within 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 the, the auspices of, of of active trading futures okay uh so there were a lot of people were caught with their pants down they weren't really they didn't have their risk spread out appropriately and uh so this year we have had an influx of people wanting to avoid that in the future and learn how to actively trade so that we have a uh, education uh, process to do that okay so here's a couple of slides uh, or here's a slide uh, self-directed ira you you fund the account you you start trading it he talked about that earlier so i won't spend any time there so overcoming economic risk by understanding futures markets and a big part of what I want to talk about today um, is a lot of times we think we understand things, but we really are not set up for the logic. So I'm going to talk about um, futures in, in general. Um, obviously, you can always find out more about trading futures by visiting a group like ours, things like that. Though this is not a pitch for that. This is an educational uh, uh this is an educational presentation, so, but you're always welcome, okay? So overcoming economic risk by understanding futures markets. Um, a lot of people think that futures markets were design, uh, are very risky. Oh, futures, you trade in this, you trade in that, very risky. Actually, futures markets were designed to stabilize the economy. That's what they do, and we're going to talk about that, okay? So there's often a question that I ask people in a presentation. I say, why is water more expensive than gasoline? in a convenience store so you pull up to a convenience store you get gas you go in you buy four bottles of water four quarts at a dollar each you spent four dollars okay you spent four dollars on a gallon of water and then you fill up your car with a gallon of gas and it costs you a buck 99 and this these are the the uh, uh phoenix costco prices here right um so why is gasoline or why is water more expensive than gasoline Pretty good question, huh? So let's think of some of those ideas um, of why uh, that's the case, okay? A lot of people would say, well, it's convenience. I'm paying for the convenience of the water. Well, don't you have convenience of the gasoline? Well, I'm paying for the marketing and the branding of that water that I'm buying. Well, isn't your gasoline marketed and branded as well? You have Shell, you have Exxon, you all these branding. Well, I'm paying for the distribution of getting that water into the into the stores and all that sort of thing. Well, don't you have very complex, expensive distribution in gasoline as well? So we're looking, and we, so we still can't really answer that question. Why is water more expensive than gasoline? Well, uh, the answer, or, or, or all of these answers here, none of them are really accurate. In order to understand the answer, we have to use a process called inversion. And we change the question. And instead of asking, why is water more expensive than gasoline? We flip the question on its head and we say, why is gasoline less expensive than water? Now, that question is easy to answer, okay? Before the question was hidden, but now it's easy. And the answer is very simple, futures markets. Futures are designed to stabilize the economy. 
and I have a really good example of, of, of futures once we talk about what they are. So futures are financial contracts obligating a buyer to purchase an asset or the seller to sell an asset at a predetermined future date. They're called futures, right? So a futures uh, contract is a contract, and a contract obligates two people to do things, one person to sell, one person to buy. And when does it obligate them to do it? In the future. So it's a futures contract. There are a lot of futures contracts that you can trade um, out there in the markets, uh, hundreds of them, thousands of them. So we have commodity futures, uh, which are like things like crude oil, natural gas, corn, wheat, sugar, all kinds of things like that. Commodities that are used in other industries to produce materials or, or the raw materials to produce in products, right? Uh, you have stock index futures like the S&P 500 index and the Dow Jones index. And that's what we trade actually is, is S&P 500 and the Dow Jones index uh, because uh, of the reasons we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, you could trade currencies on the Forex. You could trade, trade precious metals, gold, silver, palladium, copper, silver. You could trade uh, U.S. Treasury futures, bond, you know, bonds, those kinds of things. So I'm going to use sugar as an example of a, of a commodity that you might trade. We don't trade sugar, but some people in my group do trade sugar. Okay. So if you, future sugars are standardized. Um, they're standardized, and right here. Uh, you would you would buy a lot of sugar, <laughs> you know, um, uh, 112,000 pounds, okay, of sugar is is typically what a contract would represent, um, and uh, that's 50 long tons, okay, so you'd buy a lot of sugar at a time, so you'd, you'd enter a contract to buy sugar, and let's talk about why we would do a futures contract to buy sugar. Let's say I'm a candy manufacturer, and to manufacture candy, I need sugar, okay? So what happens is, um, you know, sugar is harvested, and we have seasons to that. Um, we have things called droughts. We have um, things called fires that might sacrifice a uh, sugarcane field, uh, or whatever the case may be. Okay. So I, as a manufacturer, want a very steady supply of sugar. Okay. So. If I'm if it's if it's the the fall time, you know, maybe it's October, maybe it's September. And I know that I'm going to need a lot of sugar in March and April uh, or in February. I might make a contract that says, hey, next year. I want you to deliver me this amount of sugar at a specific price. That stabilizes me in a couple of ways. I get a steady supply and I and I'm contracted for the price that I'm going to pay for that sugar. Right. So there's no guessing uh, because if if it came March or April or February and I didn't have sugar or the price went up, it would I would have to then charge more money for my product. Uh, I might not be able to supply my dis distributors with that product. So it's very important that I get my raw materials. So I contract with them with a futures contract. Very simple uh, thing. If I'm a builder and I need lumber um, and I'm building all over the place, I might do a lumber contract where I get lumber, okay? Um, so that makes me happy as a manufacturer to know that I can get my raw materials when I need them at the price that I contracted for. Distributors and retailers, they're happy too because they can keep my product distributed and on the shelves. Their pricing is stable because my pricing is stable. So everybody's happy. I'm happy as a manufacturer. My distributors and retailers are happy as well. Okay, so how can I my, how can I manage my financial position in the company um, uh, and successfully plan for the future? Um, well, one of the things that we do is we have um, things called speculation. Uh, if I think that the prices are going up, I think the prices are you know due to, you know maybe um, maybe cotton, maybe I'm trading cotton. I think the prices are going to go up because we have a severe drought. I can kind of hedge my I can hedge my my products um, that way as a manufacturer, um, but we have a thing called speculators. Speculators, they're not in the industry. They just speculate on the pricing of certain contracts, and they trade those pricing. Uh, they trade those contracts based on pricing. So, in other words, maybe I don't need sugar, right? I don't need sugar, but um, I'm a speculator. 
And so I can buy a futures contract at a small price. And then, and if I think if, if whatever reason, I think uh, the price is going to be going up, I can then sell that future contract to the people who need the sugar at a higher price later. So I can speculate in the industry as the prices are going up and down, we can trade these contracts. So, so some people who are trading contracts don't really want to take delivery of that product. They're just speculating and making money that way. And that's what we do. Um, uh, in the industry is we speculate because the particular contract that we have, there is really no deliverable. It's speculation on the S and on the uh, valuation of the S and P 500. Uh, I had a couple of examples here of, of sugar um, that let's say you purchase Mark sugar, March sugar at um, 13 cents a pound. Right. Um, and the next day the price raises to 15 cents a pound. Well, um, you made two cents a pound, and if you're trading, you know, I just I'm rounding off the numbers here. If you traded 100,000 pounds, you just made $2,000. Okay, by buying the contract at 13,000 or uh, at uh, 13 cents, and then selling the contract at 15 cents a pound. Now I simplified it um, just for the purpose of, of demonstration here, but um, you can see that just a very small movement in price, just two cents movement in price. Could make me two thousand dollars, and futures contracts have nice movement a lot of times, and you take advantage of that volatility, and you want to be in something that's relatively, um, relative relatively predictable in that it has a good history, um, and those sorts of things. Uh, but what what if the price dropped and I sell? Well, you're going to then have to pay the difference. So if you buy if you bought the sugar at 15 cents and you sold it at 13 cents, you're going to lose two cents a pound, okay? Um, and there are ways that we can manage that as well. Uh, speculators can lose money if the price goes down, but we could sell short and actually make money when we see that the prices are going down, okay? Um, there are a lot of people that do both. They speculate and they're a corporate user or or they're an industry user. Uh, for example, Cargill. It's a really big company this was one of the largest privately held companies in the united states they you, you probably consume cargill products all the time if you ever eat anything with corn syrup in it um they parts of their company heavily uh trade corn futures um to stabilize what they're doing to and to hedge the risk against their commodities um, uh, increasing and decreasing in price okay so what are the best futures to trade? Because there's thousands of things you could trade. Like I said, you could trade gold, you could trade commodities like um, uh, uh, corn and wheat, all these things. So what's a good thing to trade? Well, typically when you learn to trade, it's a learning process. So you want to trade something that um, that people readily understand and is very simple. A lot of people like, for example, options. Options are kind of complex because you deal with things like time decay. Futures, you don't have to deal with those things. You're just strictly dealing with price action, and you're strictly dealing with human behavior in pricing. So it's there, it's easier to learn. So uh, what's the best futures to trade? Well, that's a spec. That's a, a subjective question. Um, but but there are characteristics of things that, that are probably preferable to learn to trade. Um, <clears throat> um, most futures can be traded on the same types of charts and graphs. They all follow the same kind of human behavior and the same methodology of making money, which by the way, is not predicting whether the price is going up and down. It's actually money management strategies. I can trade, the price can be going straight up and I could trade shorts and make money. The price could be dropping straight down and I could be trading long and make money. And learning those techniques is is critical. And 90% of the people out there don't teach you how to those techniques, uh, use those techniques. So we want again, we want to think in crayon. We want to keep things very simple when we learn how to do things. Hey, Dr. Cast, we lost your audio again. All right, is my audio back? It is. Thank you. Okay, that's kind of bizarre. Okay, so a lot of people, I ask a lot of people when they want to talk talk investment, I say, what industry is our president in? President Trump, what? How did he make his billions? 
And a lot of people say real estate. Well, that's about half the, uh, that's about half truth right there. It's actually, he understands financing and investing. That's how the majority of his money is made. Uh, the real estate is just a vehicle he used to really maximize his financing and investing. So uh, if you want to, if you're looking for uh, how to make money, a really good um, um, playground to play in is money. And uh, futures is a, is a really nice way of doing that. So we trade the S&P 500 E-mini. And um, we do that. Uh, we could trade anything, um, but we do that for very specific reasons. Uh, they provide a lot of unique features that other uh, uh, vehicles don't have. They're, they're highly liquid. The S&P 500 E-mini is traded on the Chicago Board of Exchange, and it's, it's the largest trading, traded um, uh, instrument um uh, index um uh, i guess it's probably in the world um <laughs> it's very liquid so there's always buyers and sellers waiting you know you don't want to buy something or trade in something that's hard to get a seller or a buyer so um it's very liquid you can actively trade in it 23 hours a day the uh, it has a great price his history for the last 90 years it's gone up now it does retrace and we we take advantage of those retracements while other people are worried about retracements and making their money back, we trade the re we trade when things are are coming down a bit. But it's gone up and consists consistently because it's comprised of all of the best um, uh, companies um, available. So the best publicly traded companies, 500 of them. Um, volatility, there's more than enough volatility in a day, but not too much. So that you have a really balanced thing that you're trading here. So it's 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 the, the behavior is highly predictable, and we see it uh, every day. So the market's kind of rigged because if you're trading something that has 500, think about this. If it has 500 of the top uh, valued um, uh, companies, if one of those companies stops performing, what happens? It's kicked out of the S&P 500 and it's replaced. So if an entire industry went went under or was uh, became obsolete, um, all of those companies would be replaced. And you see every now and then companies that are replaced in the S&P 500 so that um, it's always the best company. So if the S&P 500 had a really big problem, then we probably in our economy will have even a bigger problem than what we're typically worried about <laughs> because it would be a reflection of all of those companies having major issues. So uh, that gives us a little bit of solitude at night. The other thing is, is, is we don't go to bed on a Friday and wake up in the money and all of our money's or wake up on Monday and all of our money's gone. We actively trade, so we don't we don't leave money in our investment vehicle. We we take a trade and then we get out, so that our money is not at risk during these times. So it's a really good balance. You have your regular investing. You know what we think think of think of is just regular conservative investing, whatever you have, uh, and then you have some active trading that helps offset, um, and you're typically exchanging risk for the higher risk for higher returns, and that takes education and a mental process. So we don't want to fight it; we want to feel it. You know, um, the S the the indexes or the indices, properly called, uh, they're designed to outpace inflation, and that's what they do. Um, uh, typically, and that's what they're designed to do. Uh, now, can we guarantee that they are going to do that? No, but we can actively trade them and take advantage of upswings and downswings. Okay, so the market's rigged uh, in in terms of the indices. That's a very nice thing to 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 be involved with. Strategic objectives are to build consistent consistency. One of the things that we do, and this is to demonstrate um, a plan. Now, uh, I told you I might talk about some numbers, but these numbers are just our goals. These, um, if you're not meeting the goals, then you don't actively trade. So if you start not meeting the goals, you wouldn't actively trade. This is just what we do. There's a lot of different uh, risk models that we could use. I'm just using these as numeric examples uh, to show you how you grow your trading career. Um, with the same amount of effort. This is what this is to demonstrate. This is not to demonstrate how much money anybody's promising you, okay? So uh, we try to make five to 10 points a week. 
and we trade one contract for every $3,000 in our account. And we all start at one contract and we build it organically so that we're not risking big parts of our portfolio that we've spent 5, 10, 15, 30, 40 years to build. Okay. I said, we don't take all of our money out of our, our regular investments, put them self directed, and then just start, you know, mama needs a new pair of shoes gambling. We want to try to avoid that at, at all costs. We want to be very conservative in our approach. If we can make five to 10 points a week, that's all you'll ever need to do. And I'm going to show you why. So um, a contract is one point is $50 per contract. So let's take a look at how you would grow your trading career. Okay. As an example, you might start off trading one contract. If you're making five points a week, that's only 250 points or $250 a week. But at the end of the year, it's a huge return on that money in your portfolio, right? Very specific to that portfolio trading. Once you're successful at one contract, you move to two contracts. The same five points a week now would net you $500 a week. And then you move on up the chain um, to 10, hold on one second. we had a delivery there uh so you're not making more points okay uh eventually you would move up to maybe 10 contracts that you're trading per trade and that would be 2500 dollars a week right uh and that's the low end target that we have um like i said this is not this is just to show you that that you increase your contracts you don't increase your performance so you become very consistent on your performance, okay? Just five to 10 points a week. And then as you wanna make more money, you increase your contracts and you do it very specific to very specific money management, very specific rich, risk management, which is one contract for every $3,000 in your portfolio. And that's it. So this gives you an idea that, that with the same effort, you can increase your returns. Now on the same, at the same time, uh, increasing your contracts also increases the risk, but that risk is directly correlated to your account and your account balances. Uh, so, um, you know, you need education, you need mentorship. Uh, for example, our group is a self-directed group. You don't have a guru in there. I mean, uh, I kind of built it on being a guru in the beginning, but uh, the group has grown so big over the last decade, thousands and thousands of people have gone through um, that um, it is a self-directed group. Our moderators come are from within the group, um, and um, so we try to make everything we do very smart, very specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and uh, time-bound so we understand what's going on. Uh, just to give you an example of some of the tools that we, we do, we have a uh, – we have a, a trade called the S, uh, the Delta one two three trade, and Delta means a change, um, uh, uh, a rate of change there. And so we have uh, some very simple blue ball green ball signals to tell us, hey, it's time to look at a trade, and then we evaluate a trade based on trend retracement, cloudy stop, and headroom from profit. All the things that you might learn on the internet are typically designed to focus you on specific trades. We're not, we don't focus you on specific trades. We let money management do the work for us. We let risk management do the work for us um, in some very clever uh, ways, okay? That have worked for many, many years. Uh, you could trade uh, when the market's going up. You can trade when the market's going down when you're trading futures. So for example, if we look at this uh, screen, the price went up from 10 o'clock down here. It went up. We look for a retracement in the price. In other words, we look for a discount. Once the price is discounted, it gives us a um, it gives us a ball, and then we evaluate it for those four things. And we take the trade. The price goes up, and we sell. And we always know where we're going to sell before we get in the trade, not after. We're very um, specific about how we do this. Price goes up. We wait for a discount. It comes down. Now I won't get into technical specifics, um, but let's just say. We operate within a Goldilocks zone. 
you can never sell at the top and you can never buy at the bottom. That's unrealistic. People try to teach that. It just won't happen. We learn to teach you to recognize um, a Goldilocks zone of discounts that makes sense. And a lot of it is psychological. We get you to overcome your fear and your greed. And if I look for this next uh, slide, when the prices are going down, it's the same way. The price dropped. It went up a bit. Then we can do a contract to sell, wait for the price to go down, sell, um, buy it back. Um, and so we can trade going both directions. So futures trading, uh, the things that we covered here, um, I said what we covered, what we covered, right? Uh, futures trading is meant to stabilize the markets, contrary to what people might think. It's very simple, actually. Um, speculators, they trade contracts. They don't take delivery on anything. That's what that's what futures traders do. Uh, if I was trading uh, gold, I might not want to take delivery of that gold. Uh, I have taken delivery on gold, but I might not want to take delivery on gold um because i don't need the gold i'm just trying to make the difference of, in the contracts why trade the s p uh, uh very smart objectives um um so you want to learn that within an academy or within a trading group a professional trading group and uh, pay for those services for the education and for the mentorship and for the camaraderie and for the platform to discuss trades in and to to help each other along um it's 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 really important that you don't try to do these things on your own i believe because there's too much information out there that that complicates things and doesn't provide the right risk management portfolio management that you really need and it is a real learning experience it's very simple but it's not easy it's kind of like losing weight right concept is simple you know eat less calories than you burn yeah, real simple, right? But I can lay in bed at night with a box of uh, chocolate chip cookies and wonder why I didn't lose any weight this week, <laughs> right? So same thing with trading. You got to be very smart about things, okay? Again, speculators don't take delivery. You don't want a dump truck coming up and dumping a bunch of wheat or corn or anything on your on your lawn because you don't need it. You speculate and you trade the contracts. Um, um, futures, again, we talk about stabilizing the market. Why not trade options or stock trading? You know, penny stocks, those kinds of things. Well, um, they're 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 pretty different. Um, uh, futures, we have a good short term um, strategy. Uh, you're in in the day, you're out of the day. It's it's it can be called day trading, though day trading usually refers to stocks, um, getting in a stock and then getting out of stock during the day. Uh, options trading is a little different. Uh, futures trading is very simple. Um, and uh, yeah, we have a term called contract for difference. That means you make the delta, the difference between where you buy it at and where you sell it at. Uh, they're highly liquid, um, not easily manipulated because the markets are so big. Uh, you can't have people come in there and manipulate the markets just really quickly. You do you do have what we call market makers and things, but but you ride on their coattails. You don't try to beat the market. You try to work with the market. Be smart, right? Uh, S&P 500 E-mini that we do is highly leveraged, so you don't really have it. The margin is built in so that you can use a little bit of money to control a lot of money. Um, and it has a very uh, uh, long bias. In other words, it's, it's biased to the long trade. Uh, when you're, whenever you're trading, you have something called a trading dom, a depth of, a depth of movement. We also call it a broker ladder, and this is, what it, this is what it looks like. This is one of the tools when you have a brokerage account to trade. This is a tool that you use. Looks a little complicated, actually pretty simple. There's just a couple of buttons on here that you normally use. One's the buy button, one's the sell button. A flatten button, how many contracts you're trading, and a couple of little things like that. But that's what it looks. the tools look like. We use charts. Uh, I think I showed you some charts earlier with some arrows on them for short sales, long sales. And we have some charts here with uh, candlesticks on them, and we have a couple of EMAs, so we don't trade on those, and those are exponential moving averages. We don't trade on them, it just kind of visually, we use them as a, we, we use them as training wheels when you learn to trade. Um, uh, there are some real fundamental rules when we're looking at traders. Uh, beginners need to realize that um, uh, the trade, 
we're always dealing in our minds with a 50-50 proposition. And we want to be profitable at a 50-50 proposition. Okay. We have to understand the trends, whether they're up and down. Uh, if there is no trend, we don't trade. And we then look for the proper setup, which means we're looking for a discount. We're called discount traders. So we look at our market directional movement, and then we look for a discount within that movement. Once we take that trade, if we're doing it perfectly, we only win 60% of those. That's the target between 50 and 60. If we're not making that target, we have to re with our specific money management, we have to reevaluate what we're doing and, and get out of the live trading. Uh, so we want we don't want to trade based on what we think we can make or what we're promised or what Joe makes or Fred. We build our own track records and we know what our we we have our own targets for our own performance, individual, very individualistic. Um, what we see in the past um, helps us understand what to accept in the expect in the future, but it doesn't really tell us exactly what's going to happen. We're, there's a certain amount of chaos in the market that you can't overcome. Again, we we always just expect 40 to 50 percent chaos in the market. In other words, even if we take the exact proper trade, we should do it. We got a 50 percent chance up to, to of losing that trade. Uh, psychology, you have to learn to manage your emotions. You have to learn to be rules based and don't start breaking the rules and not be driven by fear and greed. And, um, you know. We have uh, some of these uh, little uh, fairy tale stories here um, that deal with uh, fear, greed, shortcuts. Don't take shortcuts. You know, my dad was really famous in the family for turning a three-hour drive into a nine-hour drive because he wanted to take a shortcut of some on some old map that he had found or whatever. And we don't want to take shortcuts. We want to properly educate ourselves. Uh, we have some uh, contact information right here, and then that would be the end of the presentation. Um, futures markets are really are the key to economic stability. Uh, you can learn them very easily by joining a group that, 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 and, and there are some things to joining groups. You want to always make sure that you can pick up the phone and talk to the person in the group. I see a lot of things on the internet. You can join groups, but you can't talk. You can't see other people chatting. You want groups that are trading, taking trades, but showing you the trade when they get in it. And then so that you can see whether the outcome was met not groups that just show you, hey, I took this trade and this was the outcome. You don't want to be sucked in that, those kinds of things. So you always want to be able, if you can't pick up that phone and talk to the CEO of a trading group, that's not a trading group to join. And if, and if they're not talking money management strategies and, and showing you what they're doing and discussing it as a group, um, then you will kind of want to stay away from some of those uh, pitfalls because it's, it's rampant on the internet. It's not as hard as you think it is, but again, you don't want to get greedy and take a lot of money away from the things that you have been very conservative and stable at for the last however many years it is. You want to take a portion of it, spend money on your education, spend money on your mentorship, uh, and then start investing that money and trading that money yourself and let it grow organically through the growth of going from one contract to two contracts to three contracts and let it grow organically to get to the level that you want to be at. And uh, that's pretty much uh, – the, the presentation of how futures fits in with a good self-directed IRA. I think it's very smart. Thanks, Dr. Cass. I appreciate that. Um, and let me go ahead and uh, put both contact information up and let's go ahead and take some questions. So we're at, uh, we got about five minutes left, so we're in good shape there. So okay. if you're ready, I will go ahead and, uh, and ask some of these. So let's see. One question is, it's a it's a little short, but it says, micros two need less average. Does that make sense to you, mm -hmm. Dr. Katz? Uh Yes. Uh, there's a product out there called Micro E-Minis. Um, the Micro E-Mini will allow you to, for example, our typical trade starting out, you will risk $200, um, you'll risk um, $150 to make $200. You know, that's sort of a, a, of a balance there. Um, the micro e minis, that number is going to look, you know, a lot less than that. So, uh, you can learn to trade and each one of your trade is, uh, actually, uh, cost you less money. You don't have to put as much money at risk. However, the, uh, there are some issues with that. 
it's a relatively new market. It really only stabilized um, with the brokers about a year ago. And the we we deal with some very specific money management ratios, and the commissions on the um, e, the micro e minis, though they look attractive, they really add up and they churn your account so that um, all the trades that you're making to make the same amount of money, you have to trade a lot more contracts and your commission structure grows a lot. That's one thing that one reason why I don't recommend micro e minis. We looked at it for a while. We may actually have a separate little uh, trading group because we have little segments where people could go in and splash around with the micro e minis. But it usually, when you're learning to trade the micro e minis, you will develop bad habits because you don't respect $10 as much as you re respect $100. So if you're learning to trade and you're just throwing money around because you don't respect that small amount, um, it can make it difficult psychologically to to trade and do what you want to do. You can actually lose a lot more money a lot quicker. It, it doesn't seem to make sense, but that's true. The other thing about the micro e-minis is <clears throat> if you can't afford to educate yourself in trading and join a professional trading group and trade the e-mini, you're probably not a good candidate for futures trading. You have to have a little bit of expendable income and uh, to learn because you might bust your account once or twice before you start following the rules. Uh, some people do, some people don't. Uh, for example, you know, most people that start trading live, um, half of them will lose their first trade and just go ballistic. You know, it's a real psychological self-control thing. And to build that, um, I don't think that the micro e-mini is a good tool to do it. There's too many things that, that that too many paths that you can go down on the micro e-mini that are counterproductive and if you can't trade a regular uh, e-mini you don't have that kind of money you might not be appropriate for futures trading now you can get in and learn it and build your account but but you really have to look at the appropriateness um uh we don't want people trading that can't afford to trade because then you start trading scared and you start doing desperate things and we want to avoid that at all costs does that make sense got it um let's uh so next question if we have already purchased a membership in delta one two three and want to use our self-directed ira funds to do investing can i repay myself for my ira <laughs> i'll go ahead and field that one go unfortunately ahead. not um the irs prohibits that kind of um interaction between the account holder and the account um, that does not mean that we couldn't figure out a way for your IRA to participate as well. It's really just a matter of um, commingling of funds. And the follow-up to that is my self-directed IRA is currently at a brokerage, and they call it, uh, but it uh, is currently at a brokerage and it's cumbersome. Yes, <clears throat> there's an interesting thing about the vocabulary of self-directed IRAs. So. Again, the term is really just a marketing term. It's not a legal distinction. So banks and brokerage houses, houses have self-directed IRAs. And the only thing that it's really indicating is that the account holder has a choice in terms of what assets the IRA is going to buy. So at a, at a Schwab or a Fidelity, it may be a self-directed account, but it, your choices are only between 10 mutual funds and some ETFs or things like that. They get to choose what you choose from. Um, whereas a self-directed IRA at a, a custodian like Advanta, who specializes in alternatives, it would be a much broader uh, set of stuff and has a lot more flexibility in terms of, you know, being part of a professional association or having a, a membership or, you know, setting up, as we talked about, the, the tools that you might want to use for futures trading and things like that. So that that's the difference. It's just the the business model of the the two different custodians. So custodians at banks and brokerage houses typically only will deal in, in publicly traded securities. Um, so uh, yeah, happy to talk to you in more detail about how we can, how you it might want to get your IRA money invested in this in this particular type of uh, investment. Um, so there's a question here about information on your educational website, Dr. Cass. Can you direct people that want to get more information about that? Uh, yes, is Mark uh, uh, on? Um, it, it doesn't the, uh, look like it. <clears throat> okay, 
um, one of the things about our group was we don't accept everybody. Um, we have to make people make sure people are appropriate to trading, uh, to futures trading. And so we have a we have about 11 layers of consumer protection involved. And uh, perhaps uh, let me see. Um, what I would like to do is maybe direct uh, them to Mark directly. And well, I know we have Joy's information up on the screen. Is that a Joy? An okay, place to start. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Pardon? So, so good question. And uh, yeah. Joy McGraw there on the screen with her email and phone number. Uh, she's happy to talk to you about uh, uh, yeah. the group and more information. So so one of the things about a group like ours is you just can't go to a website and just like just join. You can't uh, because we we have so many le levels of consumer protection involved. Um, <clears throat> uh, compliance. We we fall in an educational crack that we have to be that a lot of people take advantage of. We try to stay way to the white side of things. We don't want to get into anything gray, anything anything nefarious, anything black. So we stay to the to the white side of things. So you can't just go to a website, get educated on what we do, those kinds of things. We You have to have a personal invitation to come in and observe the, the room, the setting, the platform, um, everything else, and have the appropriate expectation. Everything is about expectation. So um, if they want to, uh, you know, call Joy right there at that number on the screen, I guess, uh, that would be the way to do it. And she can invite you in. We have about uh, 10 hours of moderated trading a day, but they need to really set the expectation, the do's and don'ts, the rules of the room. It is a, we do business, we do business the old fashioned way, face to face. And um, we're very transparent. That's our big thing is 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 100% transparent in, in the trading that we do and all of that. And you really have to uh, uh, be invited in to do, you know, it's, okay. And are there, there's a question here that says, what is the qualification uh, to be a part of the group? Are there just some basic parameters that you that you could talk about that for for folks who might want to join? Um, well, again, you might want to you know you talk with Joy about about some things like that. The basic parameters, um, more so than the parameters to join, are the things that disqualify you. So we have to sniff out. Um, you know, we have to <laughs> we have to sniff out a lot of different things, and our brokers are always on to us. You know, uh, you know there are money laundering laws. There's you know a lot of different kinds of laws that we're on the fringes of. Um, <clears throat> so we want to make sure that 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 the people for the group are appropriate for the group. We don't want people to get in that um, are desperate, and you know maybe they just lost their job and they want to start futures trading, and they hear out there, oh, you can great, make great returns on futures trading. That's true, but when you just lost your job and you need to pay your rent, that's not time to learn. That's not the time to take your last few thousand dollars and start learning futures trading. So we have to sniff out those things. So more than you know, stating qualifying factors, uh, we have to be careful to know our client very well and go through a, a getting to know your process uh, so that we can sniff out things that are not appropriate that would disqualify you from trading. Because we don't want to send you to the brokers that we use, and then I get that phone call, "Hey, what's going on?" <laughs> right? So not so much things to qualify, but things that might disqualify you. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's a question: Can I use uh, a Roth IRA uh, in this type of investing? I'm paraphrasing the question. Uh, the answer is yes. So any of those account types that we talked about have the ability to invest uh, in this in this in this arena with this asset class and in the way that you see fit. So yes, your Roth is, is definitely a possibility for that. Um, well, there's one question that says, where are you located, Dr. Cast? Is, is, it, is it geographical or is it all online? What's, uh, what's um, that like? <laughs> Where are we located? Uh, our home office is, uh, or our, corpor uh, uh, our corporation is in Arizona, Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, most everybody that works for, with, for our group, we've got a lot of people in Arizona, but we have offices in Asia we have offices in uh, South America. We have offices uh, in the United States all over. Most everybody works uh, because they're in trading. Um, they start off trading, working from home. So, and then the uh, since COVID, uh, most everybody's working from home, except for our offices in Asia, where we have um, uh, in the Philippines. 
uh, where we have high high quality in English speaking um, uh, uh, employees uh, for our customer service department and scheduling things like that. Uh, so we're really spread out. We don't do a brick and mortar anymore. We we did have some brick and mortar uh, offices here, but um, things just you know they go toward the online uh, platform, and so. Um, and then after COVID, of course, uh, everybody's mostly from home, but we're spread all over. Me personally, right now, I'm in uh, uh, Alabama, southern Alabama. Just got hit by a hurricane last week. So, uh, But I also have holdings in Arizona, so I'll be out there soon, too. Um, there's also a question about, uh, is there a capital minimum um, that's needed for the group? Do you, have a, do you have a minimum amount that you allow people to, to invest that's or right. that they have? Yeah, you have two components. One is the educational component, which is joining the group, uh, that sort of thing. And uh, that's several thousand dollars for the education and joining the group for an entire year. Uh, and it depends on whether you make a two year commitment, a three year commitment, what commitment, you know, how, how well you commit to or, or how long you commit to doing this in terms of the price to get in. You can talk to them about that. But in order to uh, fund your account and start trading, I don't care if you have just $10,000 you're playing with or if you have millions of dollars you're playing with, we only want you to fund your brokerage account with three to $5,000 uh, at first in that trading account. Now, if you're through your self-directed IRA, you put it some other things that you, know, you can do other things that you might wanna you know, then move money to and fro, um, that, that's up to you, because I don't know what your minimums are, um, Clay and all of that, but our brokerage account, we only want you to at first fund it with three to five thousand dollars, no more, because the temptation to do crazy things is always there. You think it's not, but it is. And our job is to prevent you from doing some silly things. Our job is to get you to think smart and to behave smart. And it's hard to trade more money than that when the, when that's all you have in the account. So we want you to learn how to trade first before you 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 start trading more money and moving money, more money over, putting at risk. We have very specific formulas, risk ratio formulas, and uh, uh, portfolio risk formulas. We have daily risk you deal with. We have uh, trade risk that we deal with. What are you gonna? How much risk are you gonna have on a trade? How much money are you going to risk per day? How much are you going to risk on your account? Yeah. So we have these different breakpoints of risk management. So very little to actually fund your account. Three to five thousand. Got it. Um, and we also work at that level or and we don't have minimums either so um so to uh, round out that question okay last one and then we'll uh we're going to wrap up for today so it says buy or sell at the imbalance of supply and demand no <laughs> <laughs> no um that is not there are certain fundamental concepts that just don't apply to um um that apply to futures trading in general. Uh, a lot of these concepts were taken over from uh, stock trading and from options trading, and they were used as tools to teach people to trade, and they have been corrupted over a period of time, and people use, use these concepts in futures trading. I don't think that the level that we trade at, which is a retail level, that's appropriate because you can't measure it, and it happens too fast to measure it because if you could measure it, everybody would be doing it, and it would all balance out, okay? Uh, we do not look at an imbalance between the buyer and the seller. That is that is a component that happens that you can't predict or measure, but you see the result of. So we don't, we don't trade on predictability. We trade based on position in the market. So we don't, we don't predict which direction the market's going to go right this second um what we do is we look at position assuming a particular direction and if you get a discount on that position and you trade the same way you could actually be a 48 percent winning trader and make all the money you would ever want to make at just 48 percent uh wins um that's not what we recommend we want you to have you know double and triple safety nets when you're trading futures you know you fall and hit your safety net, you got to have another safety net and another one uh, to make you feel confident in your trading. So no, we don't utilize, we don't utilize concepts like support and resistance. Those are things that um, 
we try to eliminate from our vocabulary because they're taught and they imply a certain fundamental fundamental uh, uh, about the instrument we're trading. And those fundamentals don't apply. They would apply if you're trading stocks, but they don't apply in trading futures. And people are, the hardest thing I have to do is to re-educate somebody that thinks they know how to futures trade, who by the way, has been a losing trader for many years, okay? That's the hardest thing I have to do is get rid of all their old vocabulary that doesn't work and get them into discount trading, get them in the Goldilocks of profitability and get them to understand that position is king over everything else. So not, not these imbalances that you see, because those can be manipulated. Interesting. Well, Dr. Cass, hey, thanks a lot. I really appreciate you uh, sharing your expertise today and spending some time with us. Thank you. Uh, enjoyed it. Enjoyed it. Hope this helped some people uh, uh, look for some alternatives and uh, some really fun things in, in a portion of their portfolio. Yeah. Yeah. And, and everybody for, uh, who joined us today, thanks a lot for spending part of your day with us. Um, you've seen the contact information on my screen there. Uh, I'm happy to answer the IRA questions and Joy is happy to answer more questions about Dr. Cass Group. Um, and so please feel free to hit us up for uh, the questions that come to you later or for more information about the process as well and you know keep in mind that at Vanta we're, we're always having uh, educational webinars and events for your investing uh, education so please feel free to join us uh, at any point for any of the topics that we're trying to put out there um, so that you can know the most about how what you're how you're going to operate and make the choices that are best for you so Fantastic. thanks a lot yeah yeah Thanks a lot, everybody, and we'll see you on the next one, and have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.